Whoa, wait a moment, you need more detail than that. Who is this artist? Is this your first commission? Let me help you. So, you're a furry. You have envisioned a character and you want to put it into art for the first time, but you don't know where to start. You're worried about getting scammed, anxious about talking to artists, worried about hidden fees, worried about what to say to an artist. The list goes on. Well, I am here to help you. So, you might ask yourself, who the hell are you, and why do you think you're an expert? Well, I'm not an expert, but I have done plenty of commissions over the years. I will try and share my experience with you by listing 10 rules I try and follow, and some additional information that you really should know. So, without further ado, let's get started. Number 1. Try and find an artist through friends if this is your first commission. This is so that they can be vouched for. If your friends already know and trust them, then chances are they are a good pick. You don't want to go with a random artist and find out it's a scam, hence why Skeb is really good for avoiding that, but I'll go into that later. Number 2. Consider your first art being a reference page. Most furries have reference pages. I have one too. Here it is on screen right now. Made by a great artist called Pitna, aka Nathaniel. Reference images are typically more expensive because your character will be drawn multiple times and the artist will need to come back to you several times to make sure that what they have created is right and that you are happy with it. The style that they are drawn in here is important. If you have a short, chubby, you know, fluffy kimono style avatar like me, then go with an artist that does that regularly. If your character is some, some big buff wolf dude, you know, who looks really realistic, then go with a western style artist that's done it before, and you should not have a problem. And that leads me to my next tip. Number three. If you try and find an artist yourself, try and find an artist that draws in a style that you need slash like. There is no point in asking a good artist who only does canines or western style art and then requesting a Japanese slash kimono style. The artist might struggle and you may feel that you didn't get what you asked for. Number four. Communicate and ask for updates occasionally. This is important. Ask how it's going. Artists don't bite. They are generally nice and want to perform a service. Almost every artist I have talked to has been very professional through the whole process, so talk to them. Seeing what needs changing is important so you are happy with the final product, but in saying that, don't do that every single day as that will just annoy the artist. Give it a week or two if you know they have not started and send a message, you know, just as often asking, hey, you know, how are you doing? I hope you are well, how's the commission going? Be polite and clear and all will be well. Number five, don't use an artist that has a blanket no refunds policy. There are exceptions to this rule, such as the artist is very popular or you know them personally, but I would avoid these because if something happens out of their and your control, you should be able to get a refund. Just don't expect a refund from any other artist once the sketching phase has begun, because it's normal practice to be locked in at that point, which is fine. What I'm talking about is after a lot of time, no work has been done, and then they refuse to give you your money back, citing terms and conditions. Avoid these. 
Number six, ask for a price upfront. I have only had an artist charge me extra out of the blue once, and that was on a not safe for work commission. No, it wasn't of this character that you see in front of you. This was a gift for a friend who had always wanted some not safe for work art, so I got her one as a gift. The artist had put up a set price, but after the sketch was complete, they wanted an extra $10. The reasoning is that the character was plus sized, which seemed like a very stupid reason. I asked them to elaborate, and they felt that, and I quote, any extra fetishes add an extra 10% extra charge. I don't see how being chubby counts, but I also didn't ask what the price was until after I submitted my idea. By that point, I had paid for the slot. I should have asked first before they started doing any work, and that's what you should do too. This instance is quite rare outside of not safe for work art, where extra stuff and certain kinks increase the price, and most of the time they will just tell you what the price is before starting. So just ask before any work starts to avoid this and get it on paper or a message. God, the lighting in this world is really weird. Anyway, number seven. If you need changes during the sketching phase, SAY SOMETHING! This is a trap a lot of people fall into because they are anxious about annoying the artists. Artists want to do a good job. They will feel better knowing that they have delivered what you paid for and you're happy with it than things being wrong. There are limits, however, such as you never being happy with a sketch and you want to add more and more and more and you didn't mention it in your initial request. That's a you problem. Also, don't ask for lots of changes after the sketching phase is done because that generally doesn't go down very well. Ah, the lighting in here is way better. Gosh, I wish I could go here in real life. Anyway, number eight. Don't haggle if the artist has a set price list. Artists these days usually have a set price list on their commission info. Check beforehand. If you try and haggle an artist down if they have a set price list, they will probably get frustrated at you and politely tell you no. If you keep pushing it, they might not do any art for you at all. Respect their prices. If you don't like their costs, then find another artist who's more in your range. Also, one more bit on this. Don't haggle down artists that operate with slots for the amount of commissions that they take on at a time. If you win a slot, but then they refuse you due to haggling, it will mean that the artist now has to fill it with someone else, which is a dick move, and it denies another person who was also bidding. Don't do that. Number nine, if you go ahead with a popular artist, check slash ask what their current queue is like. Popular artists have very long queues. It can literally take two years before they get to your artwork. This should be checked with any artist really, but ask what their queue is like. They may have a Trello board, they might not. My point is, don't expect a quick turnaround on a famous furry artist. Some may be quick, but a lot, or not. Apparently this world is just a big slice of bread, y you know what, I don't care. Number 10, have reference images ready if applicable. Most artists will ask what pose you want the character in, how you want them to be built, what background you want, etc, etc. You need to think of these before you talk to an artist ideally. If you don't have reference images or a character reference, the artist will have to do what they can with what you describe. And let's face it, it can be hard to get this across sometimes. I'm dyslexic. I confuse people all the time with typos and mixed up words or meanings and getting my scripts wrong, so references for me are really helpful. If you say something like, I want my character to have glowing eyes, for example, that can mean a lot of different things to an artist. Does it mean it should have one solid eye colour? Does it mean that they are emitting light? Do they glow softly or brightly? Does the effect leave trails? Etc, etc. Things that sound simple might not be. So have some examples ready. Google images, look up for Affinity or E621 or whatever artwork you think is most relatable. So, those are my 10 tips. However, there is more that I should go through, which is a more of a general thing. This is a whole other section on its own. Look out for warning signs and protect yourself if things go wrong. This is where a lot of anxiety comes from when it comes to commissioning artists. Not every artist out there is a wonderful dream maker ready to bring your character to life. Sadly, there are some bad apples. 
Here are a few warning signs and what to do if you think something is wrong. But first, you need to protect yourself. For your own protection, use PayPal. Luckily, most artists also use PayPal or a similar service. If you pay them via this method, but close to six months, they haven't done any work, even though they agreed to complete it before then, PayPal offers refunds using claims, only if you have put it in before six months have passed. If an artist refuses to use PayPal and wants to use some other service, check to see disputes can be handled. So, about those warning signs. They seem to be perpetually unable to do the work that you paid them for, for whatever reason. Life can happen. Artists are people and have to deal with their own problems, but there are dishonest people out there who will just make up excuses. I have had to deal with this personally a few times, and so have a few of my friends, and it was always a mess. But the same pattern always followed. The artist constantly made up excuses, months after months after months after the time they said they would complete it, and they still couldn't show any work. They might legitimately be having personal issues, but you need to protect yourself, first and foremost. A reasonable person will understand that. A person who doesn't care about their clients or reputation should be avoided at all costs. There is a website a lot of furries might not know about called artistbeware.info and I urge any of you before you start commissioning artists to check to see if the artist that you're looking at is in their database. This website is for people to submit proof of incomplete or bad experiences with artists who have scammed them out of money. This website is a trove of drama, but the artists in question on there can always provide proof if anything has been submitted falsely. I alluded to this earlier in the video. Don't badger artists with unreasonable demands. There is a difference between an artist who is scamming you and you being unreasonable. This video isn't a guide on how to be a polite and reasonable person. If you go in all guns blazing after an artist because you made insane demands, this will backfire. But in saying that, if they don't agree to start doing the actual work and keep giving excuses, and might even refuse to give you a refund when you ask for it, it might be time to give them an ultimatum. Please note that this is an absolute last resort. Do not do this unless you have explored every other avenue. Start taking evidence, screenshot conversations, and payments paid. If you make an ultimatum, you need to be prepared to follow through with it. There is a link in the description telling you how to do this properly on PayPal. Look, not all artists do this, but it does happen. And sadly, that is why websites like Artist Beware exist. And I've been a victim of this before. It might not have even been done maliciously. Some artists take on commissions because it is literally their livelihood and they need to keep accepting commissions to keep their bills paid, but they are just burnt out, hugely burnt out. Instead of admitting it and closing commissions and finishing their work, they instead shirk all responsibility and hide behind their clout if they are popular enough. Yes, that does happen. Artists, I have a tip for you. If you can't complete commissions, don't accept them. That's your responsibility, not the client's. Also, as an artist, communicate with your clients. If you're too anxious to do that, you either need to fix it or consider not doing commissions until you're in a better state of mind. You can easily, unintentionally, spook clients by going silent for weeks at a time. So don't be surprised if PayPal gives the client their money back if you do that. And this leads me to what I mentioned at the very start of this video. Skeb. Skeb is a website that has been making the rounds recently, particularly if you get art or follow artists that draw kimono style art, but there are drawbacks that you should be aware of. This website allows you to commission artists through a third party that acts as an in-between between you and the artist. The way this works is, you go to the website, you look at art that might fit your style, see if the artist is open for commissions, if they aren't you can hit a notification button that will alert you when they are open, and then submit a request and payment. Now, the request is a one-time thing. You can provide references here and describe what you want. Most of the artists on here are Japanese speakers, so what you describe will be translated for you. Once you have done these things, from the moment you hit submit, there will be a set deadline. The artists 
must deliver the artwork before the deadline is up. Typically the deadline is one to three months. If they go over the deadline, you are refunded in full. Now, it's not completely foolproof. They could submit art that is just bad or incorrect. If that happens, you are kind of out of luck. I would suggest looking at what the artist has in their gallery and how reliable they have been in the past before you think about starting a commission. Skeb will not mediate disputes between you and the artist. It states on the website, After delivery, any act of forcing the creator to make unjustified revisions or forcing the creator to do something is a violation of the terms of service. It will be subject to immediate suspension of the account. So there is that. In theory, they could just submit a blank page and there is nothing you could do about it. However, everyone on the website will be able to see that, and it's all public, and the artist can't do anything about it. So again, check the artist gallery and delivery reliance rate before you submit a request. Secondly, there is no sketching phase, nor can you check on the progress of your art. And on that subject, do not try and contact the artist outside of Skeb to talk about the commission. If you do this, the artist may cancel your artwork and Skeb will probably terminate your account. Their reasoning is, is that the artists on there don't really want to talk to the clients about work, and that's the whole point of the website. Please note that while I do like Skeb a lot, I would not recommend it for your first piece of art. I highly recommend getting a reference sheet first. Skeb is a good option if you pick an artist on there that has a good track record. Chances are high that you will get a nice piece of art, but please think about my warnings before you consider it. Generally though, artists on there are very well priced and holy cow there are some absolute gems on there. I mean, take a look at this artwork here. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. It was made by an artist called Hi Hi C on Skeb and wow, they did an amazing job. They did this in five days after I submitted the initial request and it's one of my favorite pieces. So yeah, Skeb is a really good way to get art that hugely reduces the risk of getting scammed. So I think I've gone through everything that I wanted to say. I hope you've all found this information useful. So bye bye now, take care and enjoy your new artwork.